welcome to my channel. My name is Sharon, and this is a channel that is dedicated to all things related to narcissism. I'm pleased to announce that for the second week in a row, I have a very special guest here with me today, my 19-year-old daughter, Paris, or Professor Dr. Paris is what we refer to her as. Paris, welcome to the channel. Hi, everybody. So Paris is here today. Now, I know Joe isn't here. We actually were going to do a video last night, you guys. And I just, I, I said to Joe, I just need time with you. Like, I, I need just time with you. So we ended up not doing a video. He should be back next week. And maybe he'll pop in during the week, too. But that's why Joe isn't here. He's, he's okay. It's just that um, Paris and I really wanted to talk about this. We were in the car, and we were talking about narcissism. And, you know, we were talking about the, the evil of narcissism. How, how, it's because it's not just a bad person or, or someone who made mistakes. This is somebody that willfully, knowingly, purposely tries and succeeds in destroying the people that count on them. It's just, it's an evil. I don't know if the narcissist knows this about themselves. I don't know. It's so bad. I can at least speak for my family. We believe that you're dealing, you are literally experiencing and fighting spiritual warfare when you are trying to disentangle from a narcissist. And that is... A couple of years ago, uh, that would have been, uh, all right, cuckoo. That's what I would have thought a couple of years ago. I have experienced so much, and so has Paris. We're going to talk about this with my own eyes, with my own ears. I want to talk about this today. We're going to talk about some of the scarier parts of narcissism. We're going to talk about part of the reason we believe it is spiritual warfare. So ultimately, if it's spiritual warfare, it's too strong for us. We can, people can't compete with something otherworldly. But God can. So I feel for Paris, for me, for Joe, for anybody who has been saved, I, I, even if you don't believe, like it doesn't mean he still couldn't be there. I really feel like you have been helped from, you know, just like if we talk about evil or, or demons, this is something, you know, otherworldly. Well, so is God, you know. So you need something outside of you to fight, something that can win. And God wins in everything. And, you know, just for a little... Um, just for some inspiration, I did not pray to God. I didn't pray to God to ask him to help me. He just showed up one day. So that can happen to you too. It did. It happened to me. If it can happen to me, it can happen to you. Do not ever give up hope. That is the worst thing that you can do because if you give up hope, you're going to give up on, on your ability, your desire, your, your dreams of having a better life. You're just going to lay down and let the narcissist roll over you. So Paris, why don't we talk a little bit? We'll talk about a few of the supernatural things that happened to us, things we, we witnessed, and how we feel about it today, I guess. So which story do you want to start with? I think the story we should start with is kind of, I'm just going to say briefly, we'll explain the context in a minute, when his voice changed, when mm -hmm. my, my father, the narcissist, entire voice just completely changed. And when we say change, I, I'm, we're not talking about an accent or maybe it puts on a little baby voice. This is somebody who we know very well. We know his voice. It was not his voice. And he was speaking to Paris. And I, don't, I probably don't need to tell you, I think there was some evil in him that was, that was speaking to Paris. I don't think it was him at this point. So um, I'll just give the brief little intro. My ex and I were separated for two years before I left him. Prior to that, the six months prior to those two years, we were back and forth. He would be home, then I'd kick him out, then he'd be home, I'd kick him out. And this had been going on. It was a very, very difficult fall as it was happening. I guess this actually happened over like a four-month period, <clears throat> but it was, it was horrible. So at one point, my ex wasn't at the house, and I, I was speaking to him on the phone. So on this day, this is a conversation we're having. Sharon, I won't come back. I won't come back to the house until you're okay with it. We'll talk maybe tomorrow or the next day, but you need to be comfortable. I, I promise I'm not going to come back to the house. It had been a very difficult time. My son was out. My daughter and I wanted to just chill out and watch a movie together and just kind of get our mind off stuff. So we're getting ready to do that. And Paris and I met in the middle of the house. And Paris? In between us was my father. He was just appeared at the house. Now, this happened probably, like, what, 15 to 30 minutes after that phone call? I think Wait. it was less than that. Less I, than I that? think it was, like, less than 10 minutes. Okay. I don't remember exactly. I think because I remember you told me, like, oh, come down in, like, a few minutes. I just need to, like, 
I think you told me that you were going to call him or something. I knew there was like a reason why I needed to wait a few mm-hmm. minutes too. So we're talking like I'm walking downstairs just so this makes sense. Our house, we have two floors. My bedroom's on the first floor. Her bedroom and um, was on the first floor. Did I say the first floor? I think you, yes. Let so, me rephrase that. I'm on the second floor. She's on the first floor. There's a hallway that leads from the stairs into the living room and off the living room is the kitchen. That's probably really confusing. Moral of the story, I'm in the hallway. I can't see inside the kitchen. That's where my father was. We'll leave it at that. He was in the house, and I knew first when he was in the house when my mom told me she needed to call 911. Now, I think there was some background to that, like what led to you doing that So, as well. yeah, so my ex, he's in the house all of a sudden. Like, he's, like, just minutes ago it was, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not coming back, blah, blah, blah. He was, he had to have been driving to the house telling me this lie. So all of a sudden there he is in the house and I asked him to leave, please leave, please leave. He said, you weren't coming back. And he was not in a good mood. He's saying, well, you can't tell me this is my house too. And you have no right to tell me I'm going to live wherever I want. And so we were like in an argument at that point, Paris comes in and I'm going to tell you. This is one of the spookiest things that has ever happened to either of us ever in our life. Do you want to tell the story? Yeah, so he was talking to my mom, um, and he starts talking to me. Now, I can, like, kind of see him at this point because he's, like, at the edge of the kitchen. And when he's talking to me, it was not his voice. It was, like, there was a different voice box in his throat. He was, and he was, like, asking me. It was just creepy, too. He was just, I'm not intimidating I'm not intimidating you, am I, Paris? Like, Paris, am I intimidating you? I'm not intimidating you. Over and over and over, this random voice. It's not his voice. He's asking me this again and again and again. And I don't I don't, I don't, think I ever answered him. I think I kind of left because you asked me to go back up to my room. Like, I, I, never, I think so. I just, like, left. And it's, you know, it's that's as obvious as you can get that I'm intimidated. I'm literally running out of the room. Until my door closes upstairs, he's still asking me over and over and over in this demon voice. It wasn't his voice. You know, and when I say this, like, it was a different voice. It was not an accent. It was not, you know, him putting on some baby voice. Try to do this. It was him with a completely different voice. When I tell you that, and even right now, when I'm thinking about it, I, it's almost like time stopped to a degree. Mm-hmm. I can still picture him standing there exactly where he was, asking you over and over. Now, as soon as the police got over, he suddenly was able to quickly pull himself back together. Mm-hmm. But there's, I, there's something there, you guys. Don't. I know this sounds nuts. What I really try to do with my channel is tell you things that I've experienced, things that I personally know to be true. I want to help other people get to a better place. This really happened. This is something that I don't I don't think you could ever change your voice. But there was something inside of him speaking to Paris. And it was his mannerisms, the way he was speaking. It was kind of like this slow speech. Yeah. It was not him that's true too and it's also just the word like intimidating I don't think I've ever heard him say that outside of it like that it's not it just it wasn't his voice it wasn't the way he talked like he was talking like in slow motion I agree and then it also just wasn't how he spoke even if it was just like it it was more than just a different voice it was like a different person in a way that's a good point and I think that's exactly what it is it was you know Derek Prince, some of you may know him, he was a theologian. He passed away around 20 years ago, but he used to say that, and this is a good, I think, a good definition of demons. Demons are um, spirits without bodies. So they need a body because they want to do bad things, right? Like say, um, I wanted to drink alcohol, right? A lot of people believe there's a spirit of, of alcohol, right? Even the old word for alcohol is spirits. So it kind of like, you know, we used to do Latin, right? Spirit juice. Mm-hmm. But um, so there's just like when, when you, there's these, I'm like losing my track here, just trying to tell you, when I know that these things have happened, I like to tell other people so that you're not wandering around in utter confusion. I lived in confusion for so long. So even if this sounds a little kooky, this really happened. Paris, do you want to talk about, no, actually I should just tell you as well. We lived in New Hampshire for about, how long do you live? Eight years? Seven years? Se- I want to say seven years. So 
when I'm telling you these stories, I think every story we're going to tell you happened at that house. My ex had the most spectacular collapse. I mean, it was just, if you could win an award for destruction, he would be, he would have highest honors. His collapse just, it went down fast, but at the same time over a number of years. Yeah. And the view that we have now, we didn't always have. So we were living in utter confusion and not knowing what to do, what to think. But if this is you, if you're in this situation, please consider what we learned the long and hard way. There's something connected to them that is dangerous. So that was our story when he had a totally different voice. Paris, do you want to tell the next story when it comes to your brother and the office, or do you want me to tell it? Um, I think you could probably tell this one better than I could, because I, I mean, I know the story well, but I don't really know how to word word the story. I don't know how to tell it. Yeah, sure. So in, in the old house in New Hampshire, we had what's called a bonus room. Um, it was kind of above the garage. We used it because I homeschool my children. We used it as a, like a study room, I mean, a, a school room. My ex and I both had uh, desks up there as well. Well, in the room, because of our homeschooling, right? we used to watch Latin videos on it, There's, there was a TV. And my son was there by himself in the schoolroom slash office watching TV. He was sitting at my ex's desk and you know he was absorbed in his TV show. And he told me that he happened to notice out of the corner of his eye that there was a pencil holder, like right very close to the edge. So, you know, absentmindedly, while he's still watching his show, he pushed it back. He could see out of the corner of his eye that it was moving back. Now, at that point, and this just, when I say the word confusion when it comes to a, when it comes to a narcissist, that is just the perfect way because you don't know what is going on. You, you just, you don't know. Like you're, you're seeing things that your brain can't compute. So here he is, he's seeing it moving back out of the corner of his eye. So this time he said to himself, all right, I'm going to push it back and you know, I'm going to push it back. I'm going to watch it the whole time. He pushed it back and then he watched it move back forward, right back to where it was. He did not move. It didn't touch it. Didn't see anybody. It just, it moved. At that point, my son took his hand. Now this is like a plastic cup, right? This isn't a cement block or a big piece of marble. This is a little plastic cup with probably two pens in it. He could not move it when he tried to push it again. He told us that it was like somebody was pushing against it. It was a different force. My son was terrified. And something to know about my son is he's not prone to lying or exaggerate or exaggerating. I believe that this happened. I, I was there to see the reaction. Pure terror. This is part of what we're talking about. Things like this don't happen in everyday life or not that I'm aware of, you know, I, I don't know. Like I've never heard anything like this and this happens to us. It happened to us. It, ha it happened multiple times in different circumstances with different people involved in like what was yeah. happening. It's not like just one of us had something. It was my mom and I together, just you, just my brother, like it happens. Oh, that's, that's very true actually. Yeah, we all have experienced something very similar. Actually, I want to tell you, I don't know if you remember the story, Paris. I was talking to Joe about this just yesterday. Do you, oh, you probably wouldn't remember this because you were in a different car. All right, you guys, Joe and I, actually, you might not know the story. I swear to you guys, I saw a man on the freeway and we like barreled him over. There was no man. Like, this is what happened. Wait, wait, hold, hold on, wait. So when, when, what, I don't know that at all. When was, is that a while ago? It, or? Yes, it was on our way here. Oh, driving here? Yeah. Oh, okay. We're driving down the freeway. All right. Now, it was really, really late or early in the morning, so there weren't a lot of cars on the freeway. Well, Paris and my son were in my my, my, my Honda. I have a Honda. Yeah. I guess it's a Honda Toyota. We have HRV. So that's where the kids were. They were behind us driving. Joe and I were in a big 26-foot like, truck. So this is not the type of thing that you could just step on the brakes, right? We're driving, and Joe's like, Oh my God, there's somebody in the road. I saw the person too. It was like, it was a man. He was in the road, like on the freeway. And we could not stop. So Joe was like blaring on the horn and we just zoomed on by and there was nothing there. 
we both saw the exact same figure at the same place at the same time. I don't think that anybody could convince me that things outside of what we can see exist. They, I have, that is terrifying. I they, now I have a, I have two questions for it. Did it look like our father to you? No. No. Or did it look like, didn't you see like a man in the garage once? Yes. Did it look like that man? No, that different. was okay. different. This on the freeway, it was a man, man. Like, like it wasn't like a form or okay. like, a, like a color or, because I've seen like exactly what you're talking about in the garage, which I'll talk about in a minute. This was a man in the road. You guys, it, I, it, it happened. Like, I don't, I don't think like, it sounds crazy, but it happened. And for Joe and I, you know, we weren't doing drugs. We weren't being kooky or anything. We both saw exactly the same tam- t- thing at the exact same time in the same place. It was horrible. But that's different from what... Oh, actually, let me just go back. Joe and I were talking about that. It really fits in with the spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. The, the, you see it, right? It's not just... You know, it's not, not just me telling you, oh, these, you know, weird things happened or extraterrestrial things happened. It's, no, this happened. My family experienced it as well. It's not just one person saying this. So I'd re- I'm going to tell you about my garage story, but and the house too. Oh yeah. I really want to hear other people's stories on this. I want to know: Do you believe that narcissists are demonic? Whether or not they know it doesn't matter. It just do you believe that something evil is controlling them? So let let us know in the comments. So let me tell you the garage story. Yeah, I think I think so. But this one happened at the same house that like the pen incident happened in, that the voice thing, that's the same house. So the way that the house was, we would t- now we did have a front door. You can go in and out of the front door, but 99% of the time, unless you were somebody we didn't know, like you'd go in and out of the garage door. The way the house was, I could see the entire the entire entire driveway from a point at the top of it. I was doing something in the backyard. I walk towards the garage. My ex was in the garage. Now, I didn't see him see him, but I did, like out of the corner of my eye. There was someone for sure in the garage. And I'm talking to him. I was like, so-and-so, so-and-so, whatever, like just calling his name. There's no response. As I'm walking around the corner, I could see if somebody had been in the garage and ran out. I, I would not have missed that. I'm in the garage, 100% convinced that he is in the garage and he's hiding somewhere and he's going to jump out and try to scare me. I'm walking around the garage. I'm looking around. Guys, I never found him. And this garage wasn't that big. It was a regular garage. So I went and I went upstairs. I went in the house, right? So I'm on the first floor. I went up to the second floor. My ex was sitting there at that same desk that my son was when that incident happened. Yeah. He was sitting there. He hadn't been downstairs. He was not downstairs. But now this was different because I saw it's like I think they call them like shadow figures. And this has happened to me several times. I've seen just like when I say dark, it's just it's almost like a shadow, right? And and, and you see it and, and it's a form, you know it's a person, and then when you go to look closer, it's not there or, or it disappears. But when you know you saw something, it's very difficult to let that go. It wasn't like, oh, I thought I saw something. It's yeah, I, I did see something. And yeah. then to have, you know, your father all the way upstairs. I mean, that was insane. Yeah, it's not like he, like, darted through the house. It was, like, something, I don't know. It was, I don't know if it was, like, something went in, back inside of him. Like, what if it was something different? That's, I wonder that. Like, I wonder how this works. You know, some people say that, um, you know, if you're, you know, so it's a demon, a spirit, you know, demon needs a body, right? Um so it, it, it wants to go into a person. I heard somebody say that um, they don't think that, well, this person said that, you know, when you hear about how when Satan was cast out of out of heaven, you know, he fell, he took a third of the angels with him. I actually really did kind of think that prior to what I heard Derek Prince say, oh, sorry, sorry, I just, sorry to Paris just kicked her. <laughs> um, you know, he's saying that when, when you're dealing with, actually, give me a second, I lost my train of thought after I kicked you. When you're dealing with a demon, okay, so he doesn't think that, he thinks demons are something else, like something other than fallen angels. And he said, and the reason he thought this is because he said, uh, so say it's an angel or a demon, both of them were slash are angels, right? So they're the same form, right? Like we're people. 
an, an angel or a demon would not want to go into a human's body, that that would be like a prison for them. You know, yeah, we're, no, we're lesser, right? So this is something more powerful. So they'd be like trapped, right, in our body. So he doesn't know what it is, but he does think it's something else. But I know many people believe it's those third of the angels. You know, where did they go? They're still here somewhere. And I think that they showed up to some degree at our house in New Hampshire. I think some of them were there for sure. I think... Um... I'm thinking too, like now I haven't thought about angels that way as well, but angels aren't really bodiless spirits. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it. Like, like when I think of like a demon, I think of like something like it doesn't have a body. An angel does. You just yeah. can't see it. You can't see it on a day-to-day -day basis, but they're there. At least that's what I believe for. Like they do have a body. Demons don't. There's something different for there. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I mean... It's it's interesting because in both Hebrew and um, in Latin, the word well I'll skip the Latin thing for a second. In Hebrew, the and I know this is how it is in other languages too. The the word for breath also means wind and spirit. So and it's ruach in Hebrew. So you have you know wind, breath, spirit, and we think but we have God's God's air is in our lungs, right? And in Latin, they used to call, well, they still do it, they'll call, well, the Latin term for alcohol is spirit juice. And in Latin, it, 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 spirit is also, I can't even speak, you guys, I'm making a video. <laughs> Let me try to get this out. So you have wind, spirit, breath, right? So if you're talking about spirits as in alcohol, I'm sure you've heard of that, right? Like spirits, like hard alcohol drinks are called spirits. There's something connected with, with, with the mind, right? Like, and, and, and things can alter and change. And I don't know if, I don't know. I don't know if, the, if something bad enters into the body, or if they're taken over, how, how much they're aware of things. But I do know that we have experienced these things. They're very real. And I, I know other people have experienced them as well. And it's, it's changed our life completely. Yeah, it's, there's like a before and an after when you see something like that. It's like, before you might believe like it's real but then when you really see it there's like a difference you're like okay this is real oh god that's such a good point there's a huge difference when you see these things you know it exists so other people oh that's crazy oh come on you don't really believe that yes I do and I feel you know and Paris and I are going to make another video in the next couple of weeks talking about some of the positive things that narcissism has brought out into our life. One of them, and I know it's hard to believe, but there are a few. One of them is that we have a much closer relationship to God than we would have before. There, you know, this makes me certain there are things outside of our world, things we can't see. I've heard people say, what you can't see is the most real, you know, and what you can see, it just, it, it means nothing. It's what you can't see that is really the most important. And we certainly have seen an awful lot of things. Do you want to end the video with the water? The Oh, the water in the house. Yes, this is, there is really no explanation for this other than spiritual. Like you might be able to come up with kind of like a story to explain the other things. This one is, you cannot explain this. Even to this day. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, And we had multiple people witness yeah. this one as well. We have, I don't know, quite how to describe it other than just saying we just started noticing there was water coming out of our house and not from pipes we're talking the middle of the wall in the hallway had water like it looked like something and honestly it looked like something had poured water down it it reminded me of like teardrops in a way because yeah. it was like very skinny like almost was like one drop going down yes yeah we had that so we started noticing it. i don't know the order of how we noticed things but we noticed it on the walls we started the first time i noticed it was actually in it was in the dining room we called that room the library yeah and there would be water like a puddle on the floor yeah. every day that's true yes that's it started as puddles and we yeah. were thinking the dogs were having accidents yes but then it was like okay why are the dogs having 30 accidents a day like that's not and there would be volumes of, of liquid like, like if this than, is not a bichon frise going pee exactly this is like something is happening there so we start noticing it on the floor then we start noticing it coming down the walls we start noticing it upstairs um in the right by actually the desk that we've had several other stories that we told before that room reeked from how much just water would build up on the rug and then we started noticing it from the ceiling too in a couple rooms it was i just everywhere. want to say one thing just like while i'm thinking about mm -hmm. this 
when my ex was at the house, he was either in the basement or up in the office, like uh, the school room. That is where he would be. So when I tell you that the office, like, it was a, it was a good sized room. You know, he was on one side, we were on the other, but the, the, the carpet around his desk was soaked. And it smelled like pee, you guys. Like, that's the thing. It yeah. had, like, a an odor like that. And it, just the volume, my animals could never have done that. Plus, the dogs weren't allowed upstairs without us there anyways. And there'd still be things in there without yeah. the dogs having even been in there. But it got so bad that um, my ex actually ripped up some of the carpet on the floor to see if something, where the water was coming from. We never discovered it. So I had a roofer over. I had a general contractor over. I had the insurance per- adjuster over because we are going to claim a file. I mean, an insurance claim until they told us we can't because each... I can't remember what the deductible was. It was either 500 or or $1,000. Each water incident, we'd have to pay the deductible. So you know what I mean? It wasn't going to pay $10,000. When we, To this day, we don't know where that water... What, what happened with that water. But it would be in the middle of the wall, just coming down like a teardrop. Mm-hmm. puddles in the middle of the floor everywhere it it was just it was I don't even know the word for it it, it was a crazy was, time and this is early in the ex's collapse yeah it was it was kind of like the very very yeah. beginning like there wasn't really anything else going on at the time and it too like we had people like literally somebody came in and cut a hole in our wall yeah um we had like I think it was a plumber to see if there was like a pipe which w- this is a weird location for a pipe too like we were like why would there be something there there was nothing yeah we just think of a, a, a hallway right mm-hmm. with nothing behind it on the other side that yeah. would that would be water it would just and the guy said to me, he's like, because we, I was, I wanted to know, I do want to know still what that was. He's like, all right, can I cut a hole in your wall? Because like, it was like this teardrop coming down from the wall. He's like, and we'll see what's behind it. Yes, please do it. Because I wanted to know what it was. He cut through the wall. There was nothing behind it nothing no liquid no water after that the guy wouldn't answer my calls when i called him i believe that he thinks i was making this up like i was making like a prank i think so yeah like something like we're pouring water down the walls and we're talking like large quantities of water it would destroy to this day that house probably still has like yes it does because it it really ruins some of the hardwood floors the whole floor needs to be redone downstairs carpet upstairs yeah yeah exactly and it was all from this water and it damaged the baseboards guys it was coming out of everywhere and then so my ex so we split up at this point two and a half years ago but you know when we split up now I started thinking that the water could be something else like it could be because at first I thought it was like the roof leaking or something or a pipe after a while I came to the realization at first I said this jokingly I was like oh maybe it's a haunting or something I I do think that it is but you know I didn't at the time so this contractor I had him come over and he could not figure it out you know, he was really nice, couldn't figure it out. He was trying to help me. Then finally he said to me, all right, listen, if you see any water show up in the middle of the day, whatever, call me. And if I can, I will come over and try to figure this out. Because you could see um, the, the marks that the water left, but there was just, why is it there? There didn't seem to be a reason for it to yeah. be there. So I called this guy when it, I saw it, and I think that's what really got him mad because I think he was like, it's like crazy woman. There's nothing here. She's putting water on the walls. Because she's like, you called, yeah, he's, he came over, saw it, and that's when he cut the, yeah, yeah that's, and it was real, and it was bizarre. It was so intimidating. You know, speaking of my ex asking Paris if she was intimidated, that intimidated me. And in fact, I've said to Paris before, because you guys know, Leaving the house was so painful for me. I, I almost didn't survive it. It was so bad. I, I If it wasn't for Joe, I, there's no way I would have been able to do that. And even now, the house is supposed to be sold on June 12th. I get sad about the house, and Paris always says to me, yeah, but Mom, like we couldn't have lived there anyways. There was something in that house. So I, Now, my ex, I do not believe that something happened to my ex in that house that made him this way. I think he was always like this in retrospect. There were so many things he did like that just are, are, are so narcissistic way back in the day. But I didn't know what narcissism was. I had no idea. Now I know what it is, and I, I, I feel like you can't help but try to make sense of it. You yeah. know, how, how did this happen? Why is this going on? What can we do? Ultimately, you know, I think that 
my ex, there was something in him from a long time ago, from childhood probably, and it just carried house to house with him. Once the mask was off, because what when I stopped being codependent, and that I was granted a miracle from God, April 21st, 2016, he delivered me from codependence instantaneously. I didn't know it at the time, but it's so obvious to me now. It was then that my ex started having problems. Like, and I think they need you to be gullible. They need you to not understand or, or not believe that something's wrong or to believe their lies. If they can't cover their lies up, if they can't pretend it was someone else's fault or your fault or the kid's fault, you will see how they really are. And once that mask is off, you know what evil looks like. My ex doesn't have life in his eyes. He's just, he's, it's, when I think about it, you know, it just, the things, Paris, we were living with some, someone, something, we had no idea who they really were. No, that, that's true. He's completely, now I can't, as I, I think this is like I say it's weird, but I actually think it's fairly common for this type of thing. I couldn't tell you a lot about my childhood. Like I can, but I can't. So I, I don't really remember my father yeah. when, when he was quote unquote normal, but there was a shift. There was something that happened that he's not, there's not emotion. There's not connection there. I don't, I don't know quite how to word it. That's, that's true. Changed. That's a good way to say it. You know, I don't think there ever was a connection, but I think we assumed that there was. I think yeah. it was like, well, this is my husband. He loves me. This is, you know, you or your brother is my father. He loves mm-hmm. me. You know, you just have that natural. Like, this is what you assume. But once you really start seeing what this thing really is, oh, my God. Like, your your life is never the same again. The, it, it changes completely just forever. Yeah. There's, yeah. You're living, at some point, like, when this really starts happening, you're living a different life than everybody else you know. Like, nobody... And, and I'm not trying to say this is a good thing. It is not. Nobody can understand you. Nobody can understand what is happening. You are living. You know, I was talking to Joe earlier today. We live in hell when we're with a narcissist. That's where we live. We, we live in their home. And in order to be free, you got to get the hell out of hell. Yeah, exactly. You need to just run and yeah. don't don't look back. Guys, we can do other videos on this. It's getting long. But I, if you are involved with a narcissist, definitely begin planning your escape because it's the only way that you can get your life back or have any semblance. I know it sounds horrible and I know, well, yeah, but my narcissist is different or yours was this or this, or I have this problem. I get it. I do. But all of us have to come to the same conclusion at some point. Like, do you want to live in hell or not? Exactly. You need to make the decision to, to get out. And it's not something that like, just like you can't heal overnight. You can't you can't escape overnight too, but yes. There's oh, that, that that's yeah. very true. Yeah, this guy's, when I say that, I don't mean, all right, pack your bags and leave right now. I mean, consider what you need to do to get out. Because this it took me, I first, so in 2016, I was delivered from codependence and we, I left him three years later, 2019, 2020. Isn't that horrible? I can't remember. The, um, it was December a year. 2019 is when he left the house permanently. Oh my gosh, okay. And, and then December 2021 is when, when we, we left. Okay, so yes. then we left. Okay, thank you. It took me years to get out. And even prior to that, you guys, it wasn't like I was happily married. I, I wanted this marriage over anyways. I was trying to figure out at the time like how I can get out of this marriage and still have custody of my children because I didn't want to lose 50% of my time with my children. You know, I love being a mom. I was home with my kids like that. And not that other people don't, but like this was my life. So for me, it was tragic to consider losing half of Christmases, half of the kids' birthdays, losing all this time with them while they, when they grew up. So I had determined at one point I was going to stay. And I know a lot of people do this, right? You know, I was going to stay till the last, my last child graduated high school. And more power to you if you do that. I get it. I don't think I ever would have done that. I think there always would have been some excuse. I think it really had to be the point where I recognized what we were facing. I was very afraid. I was afraid for you and your brother. I was afraid you were going to get hurt. And it really was a matter of life or death. Grab what you can and let's go. Exactly. Well, I mean, that it, it did get to that point yeah. because I know you were consider, you, you were like keeping in mind that like you had to wait until we were both 18. But um, because I can remember, I can remember thinking like counting down, like okay, that's like five years away. That's kind of like not a short period of time we're waiting. 
it got to the point where like when in December 2019 like there was it wasn't a matter of waiting it out anymore like it was literally a matter of life or death at that point and I think for us we got out when we could and we didn't look back it was right there was it was no well maybe or we'll see what happens no that it's a black and white issue at this point this is what was happening we were living in terror we couldn't not leave I I believe if we had stayed I don't think we'd be alive today no I think there was multiple times where my father like the the narcissist was planning to hurt us I I think so too I I don't think we'd still be here right now because it's been like over a year since we left it's been a year and a half but the thing is too like you know my ex he's um he likes to act well he likes to pretend that he's in control of everything right like he makes up his own narrative I think a lot of narcissists do but we didn't make up a narrative you know it was okay this is our issue this is our opportunity I felt almost like the house is on fire and we found an open window and just jump Mm -hmm. like that. That's what it took plan strategically because when we left, it was, this is it. We're never, there was no, it was do or die. Well, there was also two, we left on Christmas Eve specifically at like four or five in the morning because we knew, okay, at this time he is going to be at work until what two in the afternoon something like that so we planned strategically like when he wouldn't be around the house because he was stalking us like we planned down yeah he worked guys we were living in new hampshire he worked in boston he you know i don't i don't know what i believe on this i don't believe that it's true but he claims he was homeless for two years my ex that when i kicked I, i know when i kicked him out of the house he was homeless so let's just assume that that's true all right if you work in boston why are you driving an hour to new hampshire to sleep in your car in New Hampshire when you could sleep in your car right by your work and make your life a little easier. Yeah, exactly. There's like, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, there was like, it just just doesn't make sense. Like that's how straightforward as it is. So he's sitting here telling me that, you know, he sleeps at, you know, near a mall in in Massachusetts every day, but he somehow always knows what's going on at the house. Like he used to stalk the house. He drives past the house. He would drop things off. Yes, exactly. That's so when we left you guys now, Paris is right. Originally I thought, okay, he's going to work till two o'clock. is typically what he did. Um, on Christmas Eve, we're planning to leave at, at, at at a different time. I found out my ex wasn't working that next day. So I knew he was going to be in New Hampshire for sure. So we, the stress and pressure, we got everything done. I just, God was on our side. And yeah. And, and, and we I, got out. I can't remember one period where my brother and I, we were like going in and out or bringing things into the, to the U-Haul. We're bringing those one period where it was just my brother and I outside and this car drove by the house slowly. And like, we shared a look, like we both, we knew it was not him, but we were like, we shared a look like, okay, that was close. Like yeah, when away. you are out of the situation, when you look back, it's just, it's almost like you can't believe the things that you went through. Like, mm-hmm. that was really my life. It, I, it's crazy. It's like, to think about how different, or like, we'll talk about like in a video we want to do soon, like how the difference, like yeah. what happened then versus how we are now. That's a good idea. I, I love that. All right, you guys, I'm going to end this video and Paris, Professor Dr. Paris, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. And we have one dog left here. So we have Fiona. She was able to sit on Paris's lap the whole time. Belle, the other dog, she had to go inside. So she's probably, Joe's taking a nap. She's probably cuddled up right next to him, don't you think? <laughs> she's probably, yeah, she's going to like be smiling at us like, yeah, that's right, everybody. That's right, here I am. All right, you guys, thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. And I'm beginning my new schedule this week. So Monday, Thursday, so wish me luck. If you have any video ideas, definitely drop them down below. Also tell us the experiences that you have had. And I will see you on Thursday. God bless you, everybody. Bye, guys.